For Penn being as large as it is, I think that we do a really great job of giving you a community feel that makes it a lot smaller than it really is. From when you come up the escalator and you see Joan sitting at the information desk, and she comes from behind the desk and approaches you because she knows that you may look like you're a little lost and you need to get some direction. To the women in the parking lots who make sure that folks know where they're going when they get into the elevator bank. There's so many points throughout the course of a patient's walk through Penn where we do try to really kind of shrink it for them so that it does feel like they're just going into a doctor's office it takes away some of the scariness of being in such a large place. There's a complex web of people that come together to take care of one patient in one room. Everyone from the environmental services to the pharmacy to the doctors and the other nurses. Uh, we all work together. There's so many people that are passionate about what they do and are committed to, to the patient's well-being. Everybody uh, at Penn Medicine really has one common goal, which is to provide a, exceptional patient care and also an exceptional patient experience. So Steve is a patient of mine. Uh, he has stage three melanoma. We both uh, said that's the place where we wanted to go. We wanted to get the best treatment, so you know, we said we're going to Penn right off the bat. I got a call uh, from one of my residents saying that the trauma service was admitting a patient who was hit by a car. A uh, young guy, healthy, uh, with uh, some kind of head injury. I don't remember it, but people told me later that I landed about 30 yards down the road in a handicapped spot. The car didn't break into me, it hit me at full speed. I had surgery three times. I had to have home care come out every day and change my wound, and uh, it was a mess. <laughs> it really was. I was awake on one Sunday morning with um, an incredibly intense headache. And so we came to Penn Medicine, Chester County Hospital. They were able to uncover that I had a uh, tumor on my pituitary gland. I remember being whisked downtown in uh, the back of, a, of an ambulance, a van. Next thing I knew, I was being admitted to the neurosurgical ICU unit at Hub. So when people come to see us here at Penn Medicine, chances are they're going through one of the hardest times in their life whether it's a cancer diagnosis or a long-term disease. Sometimes for people, we're kind of their, their last-ditch effort at hope. We want to provide the best clinical care possible. Part of that is really having someone be personable to you. I mean, it's really important to have those people that really focus on the person themselves instead of just seeing each patient as a number or a disease. I try to uh, understand that when they come in that they're sick and they don't feel well or they're stressed because of an illness or an illness of a family member so I try and really try to empathize with them I think. I love being a nurse. I love my job as RN and I love patients. I love people and I tend to look at my patients as my family members so I practice as if they are my family. I'm telling you they went beyond the call. Uh, Penn Healthcare saved my life. <laughs> they saved my life. My whole life, I don't ever remember a time of not being overweight. Always. I was diagnosed 10 years ago with diabetes. So after much pleading on my physician's part and some soul searching on my part, I actually decided to come to Chester County Hospital's diabetes program, which literally changed my life. From the time you enter, you feel like at, at home. There's always somebody greeting you, making you feel comfortable. It was, a, it was a horrible time. He just wasn't feeling well at all, and I was um, exhausted from, from taking care of him and, and keeping our family life going. You know, it was always nice to see a smile and, you know, you kind of look forward to seeing the people. Every morning when I started radiation treatment, uh, Officer Nelson, who was the coolest individual, he was like, hey, good morning. And I said, well, I'm here for radiation. And he said, well, what day, you know? And I said, well, this is my first. And we just got into a neat little conversation about what that meant and he sent me off, and that just became a daily ritual. And every single day I'd give him an update, and it was a nice way to come in. 
and I'd go into the radiology floor and these two wonderful receptionists were there, remembered my name from the second day on. And uh, I was like, how'd they do that? The technicians there were just like, hey, how you doing? Okay, welcome. You know, this, and you, you want to choose the sort of music? And I'm like, huh, I hadn't thought of that. You know, it was, for me, it was head and neck and they would bolt you down. I was like, I could be stuck with country music for 10 minutes and not be able to change the state. And they were like, no, whatever you want. And it's just one thing after the other. I want to make sure that they're they're happy and healthy and that they feel taken care of the best way I can. They care that much about me, then why shouldn't I care about myself, you know? I still can remember seeing my parents walk in and I remember my dad just melted down. I noticed one of the ICU nurses being very, very friendly with my dad from the outset. It dawned on me that she's actually caring for my dad. She knows that he is shattered and he needs care. So as she's caring for me, she's caring for him. And that meant a tremendous amount to me. The first question I asked after they told me what happened was, would I ever walk again? And he said, yes, it'll take about six to nine months of really hard therapy, but like, you can do it. The patient, they make you look at life different. And you see what they're going through, and then you put yourself in their position and say, you know what? They have a life before they come here. So you know, you try to make them feel as much comfortable. I can't say explain, because so, let's go. If it wasn't for Penn Medicine, I, I would have been dead, or I would have been brain dead, or I, I would have been in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. I was Humpty Dumpty. I was so broken, and they fixed all of it. Penn Medicine gave me my life back. And you, you look at somebody like him, who at one point had a severe traumatic brain injury, and we were worried about survivorship, and now on the other end, he is a well-functioning, well-versed, well-spoken young man who has his whole future ahead of him. I take a step back and I wonder what happens to a patient like him if he doesn't end up here. How do they manage his head injury? Because I'll tell you, the neurosurgeons that night saved his life. Or how does he get resuscitated? Because the general surgeons that day saved his life. And they did it day after day after day. And they didn't give up on him. And then maybe down the road, once all that's squared away, you know, you have somebody from the orthopedic service fix him, and if they don't fix him right, he's not running on the beach or doing yoga or getting on his elliptical and getting back to his normal self. And so I just wonder what happens to these patients if they don't come here. Trust that what you're doing is noticed because one senses when one is dealing with a more traumatic disease, um, senses do become heightened every little thing starts to be noticed where it hasn't before. You are apt to want to be tuned into the kindness of others, and it's so readily available. Everybody has a story, and that's one of the first thing I always do when I meet people for the first time. What got you here? What do you want to learn? Where are you at? They know that they are my lifesavers. I owe I'm going to get emotional, and I don't want to do that. But I really owe this change to them. I think the best thing that you can take away from working with patients is having a satisfaction with knowing that you are treating someone the way that you would want to be treated, your family member would want to be treated, and making sure that the best resources are out there for people. I know that I'm going out and I'm making a difference. I'm holding people's hands. I'm walking them through what can be the most terrible, bleak days of their lives. I'm humbled and honored by the opportunity to take care of people during their time of need. To be able to impact that patient experience, knowing that the science and the clinical care is the best in the world, to be able to make sure that the patient experience from beginning to end matches that is really what makes me keep going. That makes, that makes me excited to do a better job every day, and it makes me want to help inspire my teams to do a better job too. 
and that's true. <laughs> the, the impact that you have on people's lives is, is, is tremendous. And for me, what you did for me and my family, um, by allowing me to just continue to be part of the family. So um, I thank you all. So the one, the one thing I have a quote that I, that I picked up, never forget that you are one of a kind. Never forget that if there weren't any need for you and all your uniqueness to be on this earth, you wouldn't be here in the first place. And never forget, no matter how overwhelming life challenges and problems seem to be, that one person can make a difference in the world. In fact, it is always because of one person that all the changes that matter in the world come about. So be that one person.